instead of going the route of the draft, could the Baltimore Ravens actually look to add a receiver via trade? A proven big body wide receiver that can come in to the Baltimore Ravens and help get the job done. Well, I think it is very, very possible. And in this special episode of Questions from Team Keep It Clean, our very first question is just about that. Before we get into it, got to give a shout out to the newest Team Keep It Clean patron, who the question is from, by the way, Isaiah. And let me know if I pronounced the name wrong, so my apologies if I did, but hopefully I got it right. Now, his question, he said, hey, Engraven, hey, Isaiah, what's up, man? He said, what do you think in a trade uh, for a big body wide receiver, like somebody like a DK Metcalf? Oh, y'all know I would love that. I would love it. Or a proven receiver like a Justin Jefferson. Now, <laughs> hold on now, buddy. Like, with a Justin Jefferson, that would be great, too. But with Justin Jefferson, I just don't feel like the Baltimore Ravens have the draft capital to get a Justin Jefferson. Um, they would literally have to give up everything, everything and more to get a Justin Jefferson. And the Ravens ain't going to give up everything. Not, not a bunch of draft picks. They'll give up a little bit here and there, but they ain't giving up nothing crazy to acquire nobody. Uh, so we can X him off the list. Uh, and he said, or a T. Higgins. Now, with T. Higgins making a trade inside the AFC North, that's when you really have to give up something for sure. But I don't see the Bengals, like, trading him to the Baltimore Ravens, especially because the Bengals and Ravens, they, like, toe-to-toe right now. Uh, so it's like those are the two top dogs in the AFC North. So I don't see the Bengals being like, hey, we trying to compete with the Ravens. You know what? Let's ship them T. Higgins. Nah, I, I don't see that going down. Um, but one move that I could see happening uh, would be for Brandon Ayuk. Now, I know the report came out today, a couple hours ago, that, oh, the Ravens and the Steelers and some third mystery team are interested in, Brand in Brandon Ayuk and that Brandon Ayuk requested a trade from the 49ers. And then I saw that. I was like, ooh, I was like, okay, okay, I like it. Let's go, baby. But then Brandon Ayuk's agent, he chimed in. And he told that reporter, he said, hey, you need to get better sources, buddy. Well, he ain't say the buddy part, but he said you need to get better sources. So, essentially, that is Brandon Ayuk's agent. Shut it all down. We ain't request no trade from the 49ers. That's fake news. That's false information. That's a lie. And I won't let you tell it. But how many times have we seen this story before? How many times have we seen the story before where we hear about a player possibly requesting a trade? The agent or even the player may come out, shut it down. Say, oh, we ain't request no trade. All for that player to be shipped off. We, that, that, that's why with the report that said the Ravens and the Steelers were interested and then the agent shutting it down, that ain't phased me none. That ain't phased me none because something's going to go down with Brandon Ayuk. Something is. Something really big either way because, like I said before, like y'all already know because y'all are smart, when a player wipes everything off of social media, it means one of two things. Either the player's about to get a big new contract from his team, let's go, or that player's going to get shipped off. He's going to get traded. So with Brandon Ayuk, I, I do still think it is a real possibility that he does get traded, regardless of what his agent says. Regardless of whatever, regardless of everything, I still do think it's a real possibility that he gets sent off. Because the 49ers, they may look at Debo, say, oh, we got Debo. Okay, that's our guy. That's our guy. They look at Kittle. Oh, yeah, we got Kittle. That's our guy. That's our guy. And then they got Brock Purdy coming up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's about to be our guy for sure. We about to pay him soon. And they may look at, um, they may look at uh, Ayuk like, mm, uh, you know what? You produce for us. You, you do some nice things for us. But, nah, we, we're going to take that, that draft capital. We, we do a pretty good job of fielding a team and building a team and whatnot. So, we'll take those draft assets from somebody else. So, again, I, in my personal opinion, again, I don't know nothing. I don't know nobody. I'm an NFL outsider. No plugs, no sources, no connects. But I do still feel like Brandon Ayuk could be on up out of there could it be to the baltimore ravens it's of course possible now if he was to be traded to the baltimore ravens which a lot of us would love i would wonder like hmm, what would they have to give up in order to acquire brandon Ayuk? would it be the first round pick it could be it could be but our receivers really going for first rounders anymore 
mm, I don't know. Like, I mean, remember Hollywood a couple years ago. He went for a first round. Said, hey, shout out to Eric DaCosta. But um, I don't really see receivers going for first round like that anymore. But at the same time, um, well, Tyreek Hill, he went for a couple of first rounders, I think. But um, so, yeah, well, Brandon Ayuk, he could go for a first round. But, and it's a late first rounder, too. It will be pick 30. So, yeah, I, I actually could see that. Um, but it will be – could it be a first-rounder and more? It will, Well, it would be a first-rounder and more, but could it be a first-rounder and more draft picks or a first-rounder and a player? That's where it's been a lot of conversation amongst Ravens fans too. Which player would it be? And a lot of people have brought that conversation around Rashad Bateman. Something to think about with the Baltimore Ravens and Rashad Bateman um, it was the same thing that we – had to think about the conversation we had had with Hollywood and the Baltimore Ravens around the same time in both of their careers. Both first round draft picks, both in the offseason where the general manager, Eric DaCosta, has to decide whether he's going to pick up their fifth year options or not. And with Hollywood, Eric DaCosta came out and said, oh yeah, we anticipate picking up Hollywood's fifth year option. What happened on draft night? Boom. Traded. Shipped out. With Rashad Bateman, uh, he was asked about, oh, what's the status of Rashad Bateman on Adolph Fairway's fifth-year option? He said, we'll talk about that at a later date. So he didn't give us anything, and we didn't expect him to give us anything. But we'll see. So if they are going to possibly trade Rashad Bateman, I think the time that they would do it, if they're going to do it, would be now. Now, y'all know my preference. I would love if the Baltimore Ravens found a way to get somebody like a Brandon Ayuk. Or DK Metcalf or whoever. But or no, 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 no. I take that back. Not whoever. But if they were to get somebody proven to somebody who's nice, somebody who's like that, somebody who's been productive, somebody who's been consistent. If they could do that and keep Rashad Bateman on top of that. But I know life in the NFL, the business side of the NFL, don't always work like that. Don't always work in your favor like that. So we'll see. And team, keep it clean. Before we continue with this episode of questions from y'all, make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn them notifications on, and run them likes all the way up, baby. We about to have a really great week this week. I don't know why, but it's going to be great. Now, uh, shout out to all the team, keep it clean patrons. This question, again, it came from the newest Team Keep It Clean patron, my guy Isaiah. If you would like to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenvids. And if you don't want to, that's fine as well. Now, I only asked the first part of his question. So my apologies. Let's get to the second part. He said, uh, what about, see, I, I like Isaiah. Cause Isaiah thinks big. He thinks big outside of the box. He said, what about trading for Micah Parsons to replace Jadavian? I, I love you, Isaiah. I love it. I love it. Now, it ain't going to happen, but I would love that. See, I, me, if this was Madden, like, because it's Madden, I'd be going crazy with it. I'd be going crazy with it. i will give up the draft picks and acquire players. I do it every year. Every, every single season, I do it all the time. But he said, what about uh, trading for Micah Parsons to replace Clowney? And going for a young, healthy lineman in the first round. Now, if you trade him for Michael Parsons, you ain't going to have no first-round pick. Not this year, not next year. You ain't going to have no first-round pick for a while. So while that will be great, it's something that the Baltimore Ravens just wouldn't do. Next question came from another Team Keep It Clean patron, my guy, Dominic. He said, well, I've been great. It's been a while since I sent a question, but I want to take it back a little bit. So sorry if this is a little long. I recently have watched the interview with EDC talking at Penn State, and it had me thinking. The part in the interview with EDC, EDC said he panicked when he signed Earl Thomas. It made me think of why we didn't build around Lamar Jackson early in his career. Uh, EDC took over in Lamar's second season, and I feel like EDC was still settling in his own way of thinking for the next two seasons. In my opinion, I think that EDC didn't know how to build around a young quarterback back back then like what image of building around a young quarterback has he been a part of Ooh, that's deep right there because we saw with Flacco they didn't do a good job of building the offense around Flacco they would still be very cheap very lackluster for a lot of the parts at the wide receiver position. Now, hey, sometimes it worked. Like, we see a Derrick Mason. I mean, yeah, Derrick Mason, he did his thing with the Baltimore Ravens. We saw Anquan Bowden did his thing with the Baltimore Ravens. We saw Steve Smith Sr. do his thing with the Baltimore Ravens. But with those, especially the first and the last with Derrick Mason and Steve Smith Sr., they were way on the back ends of their careers. So it was a low-risk, high-reward thing with the Baltimore Ravens the way it worked out with those guys. 
And then with Anquan Bolden, uh, that that was great. I think they traded like a third and fourth round pick to get Anquan Bolden, and it obviously worked out perfectly because they got the Super Bowl, and he was a huge part of it. But there were a lot of misses with Flacco. There was a lot of, hey, what what is this about when it came to really building the offense around Joe Flacco? But anyway, uh, he also said, uh, after being behind Ozzy for so long, I think EDC still had that build the defense and sign old receivers mindset. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah, you spot on. Uh, we now see the Texans taking advantage of that with C.J. Stroud and building around him. But I do think now, uh, though that EDC is starting and trending in his own mindset of how he wants to build a team, I just hope it's not too late. And time will tell. That that's that's such a great point that you brought out. Um, but time will tell. Uh, this off season, like we slowly seem like we've been seeing a change. Even though I mean, Sammy Watkins, we saw that dance. <laughs> <laughs> and I, hey, look, I was hype about Dez Bryant, man. I, I, I was like, man, hey, hopefully we can get something. We can get something. But it's been Dez Bryant, um, Odell Beckham Jr. Now, with Odell Beckham Jr., again, that was another one I was hoping. And well, Odell Beckham Jr. came in and did his thing. But I know, again, he was not, he, he was off the field for a lot of it. But, um, but yeah, man, it's just, it seems like he trended. And again, he's been taking them swings in the draft, too. Cause he's, uh, drafted Hollywood, drafted Rashad Bateman, um, so drafted Zay Flowers, and the first round picks that he drafted at wide receiver, well, it's it's been nice. I mean, Zay Flowers and Hollywood did a thing. Rashad Bateman, it's it's there. We gotta get it going. We gotta get it going. As long as he remains with the Baltimore Ravens this year, um, so he he's been trying different ways and different strategies and whatnot, um, but. It's, it's some got a gift, and this is why a lot of us are like, "Hey, like Zay Flowers was great. He was amazing last year. Did his thing, awesome. And the way that the offense is changing is great. Todd Munkin did his thing last year, awesome. But this is why people want a proven guy, not somebody that's only proven, but a healthy proven guy, somebody that's available and proven, and somebody that's like that and proven. You pair him with Zay Flowers." You pair him with Mark Andrews. You pair him with Isaiah Likely. You pair him with Lamar Jackson. You pair him with Derrick Henry. That could be nasty. Next question came from another Team Keep It Clean patron, my guy Harry. He said, hello and great the Team Keep It Clean family. I hope everyone is great today and may your problems not stress you out. I appreciate that. He said, the draft is coming soon and the Texans are gearing up to challenge for the AFC crown. Nick Cesario has done a good job this offseason of surrounding CJ Stroud with weapons while on his rookie contract. Something I wish EDC did a better job of, but... I digress. See, team keep it clean. When team keep it clean on the same page, they're on the same page. But anyway, continuing, he said, uh, they now have Joe Mixon as their running back one. Dalton Schultz has their tight end one. And Stephon Diggs is now their wide receiver one. Actually, they got like two or three wide receiver ones. Like, they got Tank Dale and, um, who's it? is it Nico Collins? But anyway, he said, plus, they upgraded their defense with Daniel Hunter, CJ Henderson, and re-signed Derek Barnett. I think that they are going to be a problem this year. But... I trust that EDC will find a way to counter their moves. Oh, they will be a problem. They were a problem last year. Again, for the Ravens, they, they weren't a problem. The Ravens took, took care of their business against the Texans. But Texans, they, they nice. He said, we know as Ravens fans, we've been looking for a receiver. Oh, my goodness. See, that's what I'm talking about. Team Keeper Cleveland be on the same page. be on the same page, man. He said, we know as Ravens fans, we've been looking for a receiver to compliment Zay Flowers and push Rashad Bateman. We have struck out so far with free agents. Uh, Josh Reynolds, OBJ, etc. I think the Texans and Stephon Diggs may have inadvertently solved our problem. The Texans now have too many wide receivers, and I think EDC should make a trade with them. Oh, wow. I think we should trade a fifth-round pick for John Mechie the third. He was a beast at Alabama and has the ability to play on the outside or in the slot. He has great hands and isn't afraid of contact. He's 5'11 and 190 pounds. He missed time due to an ACL tear at the end of his college career and then had a battle with cancer his rookie year. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember that part. Uh, now, I don't think this should keep us from getting a big-body X receiver in the draft. I think that adding a young veteran like him, though, will push Bateman and not make us as desperate for receiving in the early rounds. Mm, I don't think that would really push Bateman. I, I don't, uh, especially if they trade, because you said to, to, for them to trade a fifth-round pick for John Mechie. They trade a fifth-round pick for a receiver. I don't think that would be, that wouldn't push Bateman at all. Because you could see that and be like, oh, a fifth-round, oh, they trade a fifth-round for him. Like, a fifth-round is not necessarily a throwaway pick, but it's like, oh, it's a, it's a throwaway pick. It's like, oh, okay, whatever. So it's a fifth-round pick. So I, I don't think that would push Bateman. It would add more depth and more competition, more so on the back end, but... For ba I don't really think that would move Bateman like that. Uh, then he said, um, 
Oh, yeah. He said, I think that adding a young veteran like him will push Bateman and not make us as desperate for a receiver in the early rounds. Why the Texans would why the Texans would want to move on from him is that he is basically their fifth receiver after they got Diggs and will be willing to get some draft compensation since they had to give away a second round pick. What does everyone else think? Hopefully EDC and Lacey are listening. <laughs> Shout out to Lacey DaCosta, LDC. Um, but no, nah, yeah, they, they could do that. And that is a good point, especially with the plethora of receivers that they have. That is such a good problem to have. I love it. And I know some people say, oh, there's only one ball to go around. Well, hey, that's a great problem to have if you got so many really good pass catchers that want to catch that ball. Um, but, yeah, I, I just don't really think that would move Bateman like that. Next question. Oh, my goodness. Came from another Team Keep It Clean patron, my guy Biz. He said, what's up, bro? Hope all is well. Oh, everything is great until you ask me to do this. He said, good question for you. Give me your top 10 all-time Ravens in order. That's like impossible for me to do i uh, in order to oh yeah uh i yeah i can't do that but um some of the best ravens of all time I'm trying to think of 10 of them off the top of my head um ed reed ray lewis jonathan ogden terrell suggs um let's say joe flacco uh lamar jackson um who else like with tight ends, I was about to say Ty Heath, but then I was about to say Shannon Shaw, then I was about to say Mark Andrews. Like with tight ends, like you could, you could pick anyone right there, and th that would be three more people right there. Uh, oh, Ray Rice. Um, who else? Uh, at receiver. Oof. <laughs> receiver. Uh, Derek Mason. Derek Mason came to this thing. I mean, Derek Mason and Quan Bolden. We were just talking about Steve Smith Sr. earlier. So at, at receiver, it's, uh, it, it, it's up there. Um, Chris McAllister, C Mac. Uh, oh, Jamal Look. Jamal Lewis. Jamal Lewis, man. I'm tripping. Jamal Lewis. Wow. Um, Lodi Nada came and set that standard for a long time. Um who else? Uh yeah, man, I guess. I think I think I'd actually name more than ten. <laughs> Next question came from my guy TJ. TJ V letting the Ravens have it. He said, There goes Stephon Diggs again, not being traded to his hometown team, Baltimore Ravens. He said, Shaking my head. They'll pick up somebody who ain't played in the league in 10 years. <laughs> he said, The Ravens going to sign Steve Smith Sr. out of retirement and, and say he still has the Jets and he's the Steve Smith Sr. of old. He said, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired of the Ravens never getting better or doing anything for Lamar at wide receiver. It's just too many great or good wide receivers the Ravens never try and get. I mean, we don't know if they try it, but <laughs> they certainly ain't get it. And he said, Engraver, how many times has EDC just said, keep it clean and went all out for Lamar? I'm waiting. All these QBs have, who have actually been somewhere, matter of fact, been to the Super Bowl, have had a great bona fide uh, go get anything wide receiver. Look at Mahomes with Tyreek Hill. Now Hill with Tua, and they suddenly become what? Super Bowl contenders. Well... They, the Dolphins were a weird kind of nice. Like they were, not nah, actually. They they were only good against the bad teams, but against the good teams, yeah. Anyway, uh, he said Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase Super Bowl appearance, Jalen Hurts and AJ Brown Super Bowl appearance, Josh Allen and him and Diggs was on the same page. Super Bowl contenders, yeah. They, they couldn't get past the Chiefs either, just just like us. Uh, and when it, when is EDC going to actually bless Lamar with a superstar wide receiver? He also so, he's always so focused on the defense and give Lamar. Dookie on offense, like, what is that? When is he going to go law out for Lamar? Because he hasn't once did. So he got OBJ to keep Lamar there. And then once he secured his bag, OBJ's gone. Dude's gone. We keep Tyler in the reserve while it's, wow, you are, boy, you cold, man. And uh, Nelson, Nelson, uh, Nelson Dropalor, wow. Come on, Engraven. He acts like he doesn't like Lamar. I mean, come on. Ozzy went and got Anquan Bolden to go along with Torrey Smith and Jacoby Jones. Even Flacco got wide receivers before Lamar. Nah, we just talking about that kind of sort of, but not really. Um, he said this is becoming sickening to keep watching. Do better for your QB Lamar. Almost eight years in, and the only good thing he feels he did for Lamar was sign Derek busted up Henry. Get Lamar that guy a wide receiver and stop signing people who are on the way out. Peace and blessings to the channel and your family. God bless. So that's that's a nice way to end it. I appreciate that. Um, see, we're gonna see. We're gonna see. It's. We're going to see how the rest of the offseason goes. We got a while to go, so that's a good thing. We got about five more months left. So we'll see what EDC does. We'll, we'll see what he ends up shaking up at the wide receiver position. So we're going to say, man. And he also said, you wait, you watch. He says, all I got to say is get Lamar a wide receiver. So he was basically saying, hey, 
this was a different email on a different day. He, he was saying, watch that presser, watch the pre-draft presser, watch Elias luncheon. And he said, hey, he don't care what he says, but he said all that my guy TJ had to say, get Lamar a wide out. Next question came from my guy Jarvo. He said, with the moves by the Texans and other teams, what must the Ravens do to stay in their championship window and get the best out of Lamar? I think that's a simple answer. Just give him the best. Give him the best of the best. Like, really give him the best of the best. You have some really great on the team right now. You got a Mark Andrews. You got a likely Zay Flowers. Nice to him. And Lamar got a nice connection. Rashad Bateman, he's he, he, he getting there. But go out and get a, a receiver that's like that. That's like that and that's not aging. That's still in their prime or hitting their prime or close to their prime. Go get it. That's, that's, that's my, my opinion. Anyway, uh, his other question was, Cam said, Cam Newton, that is on Club Shay Shay, that Lamar overthinks too much instead of just playing his game and taking over. What are your thoughts? Oh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I can see that for sure. That's a, uh, a good way to put it. I, I, I think that. Because um, we talk about that a lot, especially them, them big games and playoff games. There'll be a lot of times when it'll seem like he may be trying to play prove it ball. And you ain't got to prove nothing. You ain't got to prove nothing to nobody. Just go out there and win. Because no matter what happens, and I, we talked about this before. Say, for instance, Ravens in the playoff game, Ravens in the AFC championship game. And Ravens win. They beat whoever, whether it be the Chiefs to whoever. But they win, and Lamar throws for like uh, 100, 199 passing yards, and he has 108 rushing yards. People could look at that and say, oh, man, what? he ran the ball so much, he hardly even passed it, hardly got any passing yards. But if the Ravens won, nobody could take that win away from him. They can't. No matter what they say, no matter what, they, they can't take that win, away, that win away from him. Say, for instance, the same thing happened in the Super Bowl, and the Ravens won. Oh, Lamar has 189 passing yards. He had 103 rushing yards, but the Ravens won. People are going to say, oh, they won. Oh, that's not a quarterback. That's What kind of stats are those? What kind of numbers are those? Da, da, da. But if the Ravens won the Super Bowl, that would be the only thing that mattered. That would be it. Nothing else would matter. So if he just played his game, continue to play again, and, and the this is the Lamar thing, but this is a Ravens thing, too. They get in these big moments, and they forget who they are. They forget who, what, what got them there. They got to stop forgetting. Next question came from my guy, Michael. He said, backyard receiver. Hey, bro, hope all is well with the family. I hope all is going well with the rest of your followers. I got a question to ask. What would be more feasible, a great route running wide receiver who's got top-notch speed and great hands over a receiver that, who has that backyard mentality at times? Because I know plays aren't always going to stay on time. And how are they supposed to be called? What's your thoughts? Many blessings. Hey, I appreciate you, Mike. Um, get somebody that can do both. But, no, I, I would say the... Uh, the the backyard we got a great route runner in Rashad Bateman, but him and Lamar just ain't got that connection. So it's important that you get a receiver that Lamar can have that connection with, that he can build that trust with. Um, somebody that can do the on time stuff, the timely stuff, but somebody who, when everything breaks down, they break out. Next question came from my guy, Superstar Dre. He said, hey, Graven, hope all is going well with you and the fam. I appreciate that. And he said, congratulations on the new addition to the flock. Thank you very much, my friend. My question is to you, uh, what do you see the Ravens going after in the draft? I mean, everything. They got, what, nine picks? So, yeah, a little bit of everything. But, anyway, he said, my heart is telling me more on the offensive side of the ball, but my head is telling me they're going to continue to add more defense than offense, uh, which is the definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. Um... No, I, I think it all depends. I think they obviously need offensive linemen. You can't ignore that. They need probably an edge guy. You can go after a corner. There's receiver. Um, so, yeah, they, uh, the, you still need another safety, too. And then, of course, you just depth. Just depth. Depth at linebacker. Depth at pass rush. Depth on the offensive line, too. With the offensive line, you need starters and depth. Um, so, yeah, just, yeah, like I said, a little bit of everything. Uh, for sure, but uh, and he said, "How do you feel about the offseason moves so far? They hit home with Derrick Henry, but they got to add some pieces on the offensive line and wide receiver room. I feel like if they don't tell, if they don't, then they'll be wasting a prime Lamar and a Bell Cow running back that they always needed. About the offseason so far, yeah, the Derrick Henry move was nice. They brought in Derrick Henry. They brought back Malik Harrison. They brought back Nelson Aguilar. Uh, they brought in Josh Jones from the Texans. Uh, they brought in a cornerback who played for the Texans too." Um, but he's more so just a special teams guy, uh, which ain't nothing wrong with that. But um, it's I think the offseason so far has been underwhelming, I would say. 
Um, the Ravens have definitely lost a lot more than they gained, but that was expected because they were the best team in the league last year, and they showed it. Uh, squandered a big opportunity last year. Obviously, we ain't got to talk about that. But um, offseason so far, I, I, I'll say the best word to describe it is underwhelming. The vitality and versatility. Next question came from my guy, Mark. He said, vitality is defined as the state of being strong and active. I want to touch on some ideas and tweaks that may take that may make our versatility even more vital and get your thoughts. What's up, Engraving? You know I got to check on you, the fam and the little one on the way. And team, keep it clean. Hope all is well with you. Hey, much love, my guy, Mark. Appreciate that, man. He said, now to get on to some points. Uh, some are roster-related and draft-related. I want to start on a defense, and my pitch is let Malik Harrison start next to Roquan and have two thumpers in the middle and have Trent Simpson start at outside linebacker. Okay. Okay, so no thunder and lightning. You want thunder and thunder. Um, okay, let, let's read. He said, uh, my logic here is the strong versatility. Uh, Trenton played at all three levels on the defense at Clemson from safety to linebacker and edge. He can play everywhere. Ooh, I didn't know that. I appreciate that. He said, why not let him scream off the edge and also play coverage as a linebacker? Have him and Kyle Vinoy contain the outside while Roquan Smith and Malik uh, run the middle. It gives me vibes when Ray had Jamil McClain and Dan Danielle Ellaby or even Bart Scott next to him. Okay, I like that. Yeah, I didn't know that about Trenton Simpson. That's something right there, man. I know he could do it all. That, that makes me even more excited to see him. He says, so back to Trent. He's an athletic freak, and we have another in Kyle Hamilton. You said it himself. He's a baller who plays everywhere, and I'm going to tie this all up with a draft pick. I've been high on Cooper DeJean for a while. No, Cooper DeJean is DeJean, not DeJean. Cooper DeJean for a while. Uh, he's a cornerback who can play boundary, so he can play on the outside. He can play nickel, so he can play on the inside. Uh, also, he can be an awesome safety. Oh, okay, so he can do it all, too. Uh, with Hamilton, DeJean, and Simpson, so much versatility is there. Each one can somewhat play each other's role on the defense or even free up one another to make a play. I love that thinking. I love that. You you explained that perfectly. I, I appreciate that, man. That was, that was fun. Uh, and that's fun to think about, too, like people that can do it all. Because um, when you have people that can do it all, you can line them up at different positions and you can really disguise the defense. And like you said, you can make it versatile. He said, this, is, this isn't going to be as much of a mouthful, but Jaheim Bell, the tight end out of FSU, he's 6'3", 238. He's not a traditional tight end. He transferred from South Carolina and he was a running back. Tight end, hybrid kind like Kyle Juszczyk, but a bit faster. Off rip, he's a bruising back who can rock with soft catching hands with hips. Uh, oh, excuse me, with hops, uh, he would give Todd and Lamar so much versatility. I, I, I said with, with hips. I thought that he was talking about, like, him not being a, a stiff runner. But look, I'm, I'm over here changing the word. Anyway, <laughs> Man, he would give Todd and Lamar so much versatility as a weapon in the slot and a weapon out of the backfield and straight up dog for a back. Plus, he's big, but he isn't the same as Derrick Henry. So you'll be getting a dimension that's not on your roster. Oh, that would be something. So he's a tight end slash running back. So just... Somebody that could do multiple things. Uh, and that I've. Yeah, that was Kyle Juszczyk. He was, um, yeah, that tight end, H-back, fullback, a little bit of everything. But, yeah, the way that you described this guy sound like he could do a bit more. But similar to uh, a Juszczyk. So, hey, the more the merrier. The, the more you can do, right? And he also said, uh, obviously, we have to get these guys first. And it's. Uh, it's and if, but definitely possible. I know O-line is a need, but it's not a must in round one. Check Jaheim out. He'll be there day three. Also give Javon Baker a look. Uh, he's 6'1", 2'10". I think he just visited the Ravens like a couple days ago, I believe. Um, and he said, uh, do it all type of receiver. I know you're busy, bro, and we appreciate all you do. Sorry for the novel, and you all stay blessed. Oh, no, no, no. Please don't apologize that because that was a perfect way to end this off.